welcome back. Just days before the death of Odin Lloyd, Aaron Hernandez's babysitter ran into him after a night out. She testified about a wild night with the football star where she ended up meeting Lloyd. Let's take a listen. I asked him to drive me to my car. Okay. And him being who? Aaron. Um, now, and what did he say? That he would drive me to my car. And so tell us, after that, did the car then begin to move or drive? Yes. In which direction? Um, meaning when the car pulled out, is it heading in that direction? No, my car was the other way, and I had told him. When you say you told him, who is him? Aaron. Okay. How did he respond to that? He kept driving. And when he kept driving, was he going closer towards where you were parked or some other way? Away from where I was parked. Now, at the time, you indicated there was somebody sitting in the front uh, passenger seat? Yes. And at that time, did you recognize the person? No. Okay, just describe him. A darker-skinned man. Okay. And later on, at some point, um, within some number of days of this, uh, this evening, were, uh, did, you, did you recognize him? Yes. And how were you able to recognize him? From the news. Okay, when you say from the news, did you see something in the news, a picture? Yes. And whose picture was that? Odin. Okay. And did he say anything further to you about where you were going? To the spot. Okay. And, and when he said to the spot, had, had, did you know what that meant? No. Had he ever used that expression with you before? No. Okay. How long after dropping off this other individual uh, did you ride in the car? About a half hour or so. What happened when you arrived at, um, just describe first of all, where did you go? We got to an apartment building and we got out of the car and he opened the door. Okay. So when you say you got to an apartment building, uh, do you know where that was? Franklin. <coughs> and had you ever been there before? No. Have you, um, have you been there since? No. Have you seen any photographs of, of that location? Yes. Okay. Um, with regard to marijuana, did you see or smell any marijuana at the apartment? The boys were smoking. Okay. When you, when you say the boys, is that who? Aaron and Odin. Okay. Okay. And how was it that you went to the bedroom? What caused you to go to the bedroom? He called my name a few times. Okay. And as a result of that, did you go down to the bedroom? Yes. And just tell us, when you got to the bedroom, uh, what was he doing? sitting on his bed. And did you then have some conversation with him in the bedroom? Yes. And how long did you have a conversation with him? For about 10 minutes. And during the, uh, or after, or sometime during that, that time period, did, uh, did he try and touch you in some way? Yes. And how was that? He tried kissing me. And what happened when he uh, tried to kiss you? He kissed me and I pushed him away and told him, no, I'm your nanny, like, I can't do this. Okay, what did he say to that? He said he understood and that it was okay and he wasn't mad at me. Okay. Did you uh, remain in the room um, after that? No. What did he do? He fell asleep. Okay. And then from there, uh, where, what did, where did you go? Out to get my friend. Okay, now your friend, when you went out, um, where, where was she? She was out in the living room. And did you see uh, if Odin was there? Yes. And what was he doing? Sleeping. Okay. Now, as a result of coming back in the living room, did, um, what did the two of you do? I told her I wanted her phone because I wanted to call a cab and leave. Okay. Did you have a phone on you that night? Yes, but yep. it was dead. Okay. So what did you do with her phone? I called every cab place that I could to get one as soon as possible. And were you able to, um, at some point, make contact with a cab company? Yes. And as a result of that, did, um, did a cab come to pick you up? Yes. Approximately what time was it now that the cab picked you up? I can't recall. Okay. Do you recall approximately what time you, you would have arrived at the um, apartment house? I can't. Okay. Now, as a result of calling the cab, um, did you meet the cab? 
did a cab eventually uh, at some point come to this uh, complex? Yes. And after meeting the cab, um, did you did you have the cab take you somewhere? Yes. And where was that? To the W Hotel. Now, when you went to the W Hotel, what did you do from there? I we walked to my friend's car. You know, we're just listening to the babysitter. She's uh, establishing the relationship between Odin Lloyd and Aaron Hernandez, also alleging that Aaron Hernandez, uh, I guess, was hitting on her uh, to some extent that evening. Um, Joey, Tanya, we just got word the jury has been dismissed for the day. The judge talked to the lawyers about the quality and the pixel ratio of the photos they will introduce. Now, this, I can't help but think, uh, Tanya, I'll start with you, that the defense is spending, they're spending less time in building a not guilty defense against, uh, for Aaron Hernandez and more time talking about a botch investigation, potentially, by these investigators, which is also it correlates with the quality and pixel ratio of the photos that right. were introduced. Right. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, you know, deciding whether and what kind of defense you're going to actually put forward as a defense attorney is always sort of a delicate dance. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you want to be on the offensive. You don't want to just be defending. You want to be offending, right? You want to be... T trying to, you know, make points of your own to create that reasonable doubt, to prove your client is innocent. But the reality is they don't have to prove he's innocent. All they have to prove is that there's a reasonable doubt of his guilt. Mm -hmm. And if you do not have a strong defense, if your defense is shaky, if you can't put forward solid witnesses, if you don't have an alibi, if you don't have anything that's going to really hit hard, then you, you really don't want to get into it because the jurors look and judge you very strictly as a defendant. You know, Joey, obviously, we're, we're not done with this trial, right? We have a lot more to cover, but as a defense attorney extraordinaire, do you think that he has a really good defense here? You know, you have what you have at the end of the day. In any case, when someone walks in the door, Yasmin, the facts are as they are, and you have to spin them. Now, going to bit by bit, the pixel issue. Of course, they're going to argue about the pixels and the quality of the evidence. Why? Because you, if you're the prosecutor, say, aha, Yasmin, that's a gun. And we saw the tape we were playing there where he's walking, and it looks like, I mean, I don't know, Tanya, you can weigh in what you think it is, but that looks like a gun to me. And so, of course, if I'm the defense, I'm going to say, well, the pixels, of course, the resolution you had made it look like a gun. So you have to fight over every little thing. Why? Because if the jurors believe he was holding a gun in the moments before, mm -hmm. guess what? Looks like a duck, sounds like a duck. It's a duck. Guilty. Don't go anywhere, you at home. Keep it here on HLN. Much more to come.